Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo guide on how to flawlessly solo the Shattered Throne. If you do enjoy the video, a like would be awesome. I'll get that out of the way. I never ever ask that of in my videos, but I'm exceptionally proud of this. Uh, and I believe this is a very repeatable strategy. It's, it's a very straightforward way to solo this without dying. So we're going to be doing it on the Hunter. So up until the Ogre, up until we've beat the Ogre, we're going to run Golden Gun. I believe, I always get these wrong, but I believe it's, I believe I'm running Bolton Tree, which is the three shot, not the six shot, it's the three shot. Celestial Knight Hawk turns it into a single high impact, high, six, it's six shots within one. So Celestial Knight Hawk, I have Transcendent Blessings on it. I have Transcendent Blessings on four. Four out of five of my armor pieces. It's only the legs I don't have them on. I'm using bygones with rampage, uh, subtle, uh, subtle calamity, which I have rampage, explosive head, and but uh, major spec, and the whisper. Actually, you will see I'm going to change because I actually accidentally put the arsenic bite on to start with. So don't be like me and say you've got one thing on and you have it. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows the strategy for the first room, but I I, I am going to say it anyway because we are here. There are seven areas. You've got Diving Bird, which is the area in front of us. This we Although we've got to kill this boss to, to actually access the area and get it started, this is the area you'll finish in. So to the left of this room, we have up high, we have Fire Breathing Dragon. And then 90 degrees to the right, we have Infinite. And then you access you can access this from the balcony of uh, fire breathing dragon. You have two fish, so that's to the left. To the right, you have single bird, single fish, and W snake. Kind of in my head, the way I used to remember them is the highest plates are dragon and bird because well, they're up in the sky, and the lowest plates are fish and snake because snakes in the ground and fish in the sea. So once you've killed this 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 uh, once you've killed this uh, architect, you will progress into the ingress, <laughs> and we're going to fire breathing dragon. Now that's to the left, as I've said, it's the highest plate on the left. As soon as you break the door left and right, you're going to get a wave of taken thrall. So be aware of that because having multiple taken thrall scratching you at the same time is not good for anyone's health. I like to run out, activate them, and then run back in so I can fight them from here. And it's it's pretty straightforward after that. We are using Whisper, Golden Gum. Golden Gum, massive damage for uh, uh, the elites. But when we get to infinite, I will have a heap of heavy ammo on the floor. So I will change the Thunder Lord because the, the taking... Cabal at infinite is arc shielded, so the Thunder Lord, which is a heavy machine gun, stroke scout rifle, stroke sniper, <laughs> stroke sidearm, stroke shotgun. <laughs> it's, it's just such a. It's nice to have. It was it was very nice when it came to the game. I'm glad it hasn't been nerfed because it was probably the the whisper was the first time we felt powerful, but it it, it was just merely preparing us for what the Thunder Lord was capable of. So the Thunder Lord's very good for 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 uh, that boss at Infinite. Now that normally that shot will kill that captain. What I didn't do, and just for your guys' edification, it will kill him with one shot if you break his shield. But if he has some shield, that shield will will uh, absorb some of the golden gun damage. So it's make sure you break the shield, and it's a one hit kill. Now I have a heap of heavy ammo, I'm going to two fish, so we're not going to change just yet. You can access two fish from this balcony, as you can see there is the boss. Get Whisper Breathing, don't miss your snipes, and and it, it's pretty easy to put them down, even though I missed one, he'll back away. But uh, I have said before, just, just quickly, I've said before about the taken enemies hiding. Minute you do damage or they, they, they feel damage, they go and hide. We're actually going to use that at uh, the ogre to, to our advantage. And it's something that I, it's a little tactic that I used 
I love the bow. I think the bow is ex an extremely good weapon for for the Shattered Throne. Uh, I'm not. I've seen other people do it with with. I've I, I've seen and heard that fusion rifles are very good for this, and they they more more than likely are. I just feel you have to put yourself too much in harm's way with a fusion rifle. A bow does massive damage from maximum range. So the next plate we're going to is infinite. We are going to change. I am going to put heavy ammo, uh, machine gun reserves on. Now, the thing about machine gun reserves, just for your knowledge, if you switch and put on a piece of armor that has, let's say like I have machine gun reserves, to get the extra 45 rounds. Now, that perk does stack, so the more of it you have on, the more ammo you can carry. You can then take them off. It won't take your ammo away. So if you are going to rally a flag for something like a nightfall or whatever, put on as much machine gun reserves as you can. And then, well, it won't work for a nightfall, but for, for, for stuff like a Shattered Throne, stuff like that, uh, Escalation Protocol, make sure you change before you pick up heavy ammo and then just, you know, collect your massive amounts of ammo and then switch back to the armor you want to use and you'll be running about with additional heavy ammo. So the reason why I didn't jump across is because as soon as you jump onto that platform, you activate the snipers. And the snipers have a thing. You can see those three white darts coming towards you. They're called, it's called a retribution blast. So it could be a really bad day if you team shot while shooting one sniper. And then, so, so you're getting team shot by the other snipers and you've got a retribution blast coming after you. Not a good time to have. So that's why I, I, I do what I've got to do first. Then I activate the snipers and then take them all out before I go. This, I don't have to remind you guys, anybody that's clicked on this video will understand this is a repeatable way to go flawless. It's not a speed run. It's not, this is how I, well it kind of is, this is how I've done it. But this is what I've tested. You know, I have tested this and it, and it works. Uh, I don't know if I've said it already, but if I haven't, say it now. I've time, I've put timestamps in the description, so if you want to skip this section, which I understand if you do, and then there's a timestamp for the next section. There's a timestamp for the uh, is it Vorgoth? I can never remember the ogre's name. I think it's Vorgoth. Uh, and there's a timestamp for the lack of her. so you can go straight to the section you want to know, want to know how to do. And you can miss all my interest and insight and witty banter. So we know now we've done all the plates on the left. We know that next couple of next three plates at least will be on the right. So same as come out the door, you'll activate you'll uh, activate a a wave of thrall. But you'll also get another wave like this when you go up to single bird, which is up to the left. Remember bird and uh, bird and dragon are the highest plates. One's left, one's right. Bird is obviously on on the right. There will come a certain point. I think I use Golden Gun on the boss at Single Bird, and then I don't use them again because I, I like to have the super for when I get back to for when I get back to this area, Diving Bird. And quite simply, because the captain, because it's quite close proximity, the captain, the minute you hit him, he will run away and hide. Be, be aware for the two snipers here as well. It's retribution blasts. They, they, they are quite lethal, actually. So, when, once you jump up to this area, you're going to get two phalanx appear behind you and two in front. So, just be aware that when you jump across here, just turn around, finish them off. You don't need that sort of... Nobody needs that sort of hassle in their life. But when I jump up here to take these... And I managed to get one taken down and then the boss appears. So it is a speculative shot that I, I put off. I popped my super. I thought I was going to kill the, the phalanx. But I didn't. So there we go. You don't have to do that. No jumping shots needed. Just make sure you take out the phalanx before you progress. Another sniper. And now you've got this wave of ads. The thing about the wave of ads is you can... Just jump back off to the plate behind us, and they won't come after you. Very rarely. I mean, there have been a couple of times one's jumped down, but it's not 
It's not something that's going to happen a lot. Now, I don't use my super again, and there's a reason for that. Because we had these wave of ads. We're not going to get another wave of ads like this. So generating enough energy to get another super isn't going to be so easy. So I don't use the super again. We've, we've took down this boss. We know we've got a sniper. That is the one at single fish. We've got an invisible minotaur at W snake and then the captain. So I will let you guys enjoy the rest of the gameplay and I will speak to you guys after after we've got out of this area. Now that we've completed that area, we're heading towards, well, it's a bit of a nothing area, really. It's kind of a long area, and you don't get another checkpoint now until you reach the the the, the ogre. So, we're going to keep this set up on, but before we get to the ogre, we're going to change to our primary shotgun. And that's what we're going to use at the ogre section. So, basically... This is like a sniper alley. The first section is, is basically a sniper alley. You're going to have uh, an elite captain at the end of this little section. 
and then you're going to have more snipers then you're going to have some beams to traverse for uh there's going to be ogres on the beams and, and in fact that area is uh, where you find the first orb for the wish ender so uh, we're obviously we're going to be using a mixture of the whisper and the bow the bow does quite a bit of damage so we're going to put one whisper shot on i think the first two ogres we, we take them out with the whisper and then it will just be putting a, a strong whisper shot on them a whisper breathing whisper and then two shots with the the bow that's the first of two invisible minotaurs in this section the other is on the on kind of the other side of same level as the first one but on the other side when we push up towards uh, up the set of stairs that you can see right in front of you not this set the, the set further away in the distance when we push up there there'll be a taken phalanx around the corner we'll take him out and then eventually that ogre that that minotaur will push us but it's 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 not because where he's pushing us from we're already looking at we can put maybe like i do i put two bow shots on him and then a snipe so you can change you if if you so wish if you really wanted to be ultra cautious you could have changed to the thunder lord here and just use that at this point there is nothing wrong with that so just be mindful that when you come up here, there is cover because you can push up against against where that sniper was standing. You can push right up to that wall. Uh, but because of my play style, and I think a lot of people might actually prefer to do this. You, It's okay to run away. It is okay to run away. But running into a safe area where you can still attack from, that's normally the way people play, isn't it? Somewhere you can defend and attack from. So up against that wall is a good place. We'll pop his exactly the same as we've done for the other captains. Break the shield and then one hit kill with the golden gun. Because we're not going to need the golden gun in this section. And we will have the full super back before we get to the next section. Or well, the next section that we need it, which is the ogre. So you have two sets of these elite knights. One each side, left and right of this doorway and then halfway across you'll have another one left and right so we're just going to try and get with three crits just to keep keep our ammo and there you go and we'll do the exact same the other side just so we're not wasting ammunition if the ads like i done if they're not looking at you just fire one in the back of one of them and hit them in the back with the 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 bow and they'll turn and you can go ahead and snipe them Take your time in this section, there's no rush. Uh, the bow, as I've said in previous videos, and I will say again in this video, if, you know, it's a brilliant alternative to a sniper, it does massive damage, has no fall off, so it's it's good. It's As long as you can see them, you can hit them. It really is like that. The bow is just immense. And what the, the hardest thing I find about it is actually just at these ranges just hitting them so just take a little bit of time i've said it before I'll say it again aim for the white bit in their face and if you're like me you'll you'll still miss it <laughs> but aim for the white bit in their face that's that's the critical hit if not two in the leg does and then just make sure you're checking all sides before you progress forward that is the best thing to do here check all sides before you progress forward when we get over here, we're going to be able to see some more ads. And there's two elite snipers, two ultra snipers at the end, and two ultra knights right and left. I was a bit unlucky. I missed a snipe. Don't judge me on it, please. <laughs> so, Whisper Breathing is a one hit kill. And then we'll get another one on this guy. And I, I thought this was, I thought that was a crit. But, uh, obviously it wasn't. <laughs> so, like I've said, before you get to the ogre, all this kind of stuff, all this, all, all these areas here, this is just part of me, because the amount of times I've done it, it's like, I think I've messed up here a couple of times because of this. I'm kind of like, uh, just it's so long for no reason. It's just, it's so long for no reason. There's no other way I can say it. It's just a big, long area. And it's like, I don't know, 
It's like watching someone putting some content up and their video is like 25 minutes long, but the intro is 10 minutes long. So it's like, oh, I thought I was watching a 25 minute video, but it's not. It's 10, 15 minutes. It's just a way of making it longer because there's no rewards to be had here. You don't get a checkpoint anywhere in here. It's just a big, long area for no reason. And for that reason, I'm sitting here struggling on what to say because attack, you know, you attack this place from range. Be careful. There, Now, there is... The, the, we've already missed it. It was before you came into this room on the left-hand side, you can jump up the rocks and there's... Uh, make sure you've got a tincture on. And there is uh, Amkara bones that you can get from going over some invisible platforms. There's also Amkara's bones in this area with the the ogres. And it's on the last... You get the, the plates. As soon as we go in, the knights are going to spawn on two plates to our right. Well, the last one of those plates as we're going down to the next area, on the right-hand side, it'll be, have, it'll, be, it'll be taken, it'll be infected. Underneath the plate, to behind it, just slightly under it, but behind, on the back end of it, there's invisible, there's invisible platforms that you, if you go across, there's a bones arm car to get. So, because I was so kind of wanting to just get the run done, I never bothered going to get them or show you guys where they were. As bad as that might sound, I've already got them, but I didn't put them in the video. Sorry, I'll maybe do something like that another time. So what I do here is, I've, as you might have seen, I've changed to Stompies. Simply, just added protection. There's, it's, you know, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put something that gives you a, more, a better jump on, on, an, on a section that all it could take is for you to be focused on something else and fall off the edge? You know, so that's what I do. Now, as you can see, I, I push forward just a bit. The ogres will spawn where they're spawning now all the time. And I just put one snipe and two bows. And, and and that is it. Take your time. Don't push because, as you know, and if you don't, then, then you don't. But if you do, you know that attack pushes you off the edge. So why would you push too close? So... When we get across, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna change to. I think I do change. To, the. Uh, to a primary hand cannon. Just, just for the, I changed to a primary hand cannon just for the, the lightweight frame of it. And how bad is it? It's just what happens to me sometimes. My brain just goes because I'm focusing too much on what's happening, and what what details I need to let you guys know that the little details like what's the name of that gun that you very rarely use now <laughs> so it'll come back to me you guys probably already know what it is it's a lightweight frame primary hand cannon from the Leviathan I'll change to that I've got the stompies on because once you get across here now we've killed all the ogres right we just move across we're going to jump over and then once we go through this doorway that you can see there in the background we're not going to be able to jump. As I'm saying this as if you guys have never done the shark thorn before, but I'm saying it like that just in case someone's like, uh, duh, I've done this. I just haven't done it flawlessly. I'm saying it in case someone's like, you know something, I, I've never done it before. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be inclusive, guys. So, I have no idea, I'm just clearing... <laughs> clearing up my inventory here a little bit and now we're going to put uh, Thunderlord on and we're going to put uh, Midnight Coup which I just flashed up on the screen or I still wouldn't have got it how can I forget the Midnight Coup oh jeez so anyway we're on my way through here basically what's going to happen now is we're going to traverse this area make sure your mobility is high Follow the route I'm taking. I jump on these edges just to lose the scent, just so they lose my kind of scent for a couple of yards, and it just means I've not got them snapping it behind me the whole time. And then once we get through here, we're gonna go across up the steps, and that will be us at the ogre. So I will reconvene with you guys when we reach the ogre.
So guys, here we are, the Ogre section. Probably the most hated <laughs> hated fight in, in Destiny. This is the setup we're going to be using. I'm using a primary shotgun as well, which is the Perfect Paradox. Uh, still with Subtle Calamity and Thunderlord. Golden Gun, still the same setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to... This is our safe area. This and the area of the, the, that kind of block in front of us we're going to be going between this and that this block and that block the, that right hand edge is going to be our two cover spots so the idea is with the bow we're going to take out the ads here right and left okay those ads over there these ads here and the ads on the far right before we take a wizard now this is my little trick it's not really a trick Sounds cool saying it's a trick. This is what I do if I'm being attacked by wizards. Especially this wizard here. So once we can unshield the wizard, that normally doesn't that's that, that normally doesn't happen so quickly. Is just break our shield. Break our shield? Forget about her. She'll run away. It's what the take can do now. So you can you can use that their defensive mecha mechanism against them. Break a shield. And she will go and hide until a shield comes back. And that gives you the freedom of this area. To a degree. Now, again, if the boss is attacking you too much, it's because you've stayed in one area for too long. So, move. And make sure you take all the ads down. That's all the ads over that side. Now we just need to take a couple from this side. And once all the ads are down, then we can start taking the wizards down. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to take this wizard here first. And then we're going to try and put some shots on the other two wizards. So that wizard, the wizard on the far right, that wizard over there, and the wizard on the left are damaged. So there's the last ad. I thought all the ads were down. They weren't. So just making sure that there's nothing behind us. There's the wizard. Making sure there's nothing behind us because the last thing you want is to be focused on one ad and someone shooting you from behind. So we're just trying to do a little bit of damage. Now the Transcendent Blessings helps us a lot here because Riven's Cursed gives you 5% additional damage but you also take more damage. And I, I did read a while ago that it's no different from Transcendent Blessings. Well, they must have changed it because it definitely is now. You take more damage on an unpurified piece of Reverie Dawn armor. So, as you can see, I took this wizard down where we are now. And before I picked the orb up, I put some damage over on the other, other wizard. You have 5 to 10 seconds, 5 seconds, something like that, to pick the orb up. 10 seconds to pick the orb up. So, use that time to try and do a bit of damage. There... Just right there was my mistake. The only thing I'd done wrong was I hit the wizard from range. That puts all the ads on red alert. Which is why they all bunch together, they're all shielding each other. Don't try and take the ads out on their own. If, if you can't, you can't. And as you can see, it didn't really matter too much. The wizard couldn't get back in the bubble fast enough. But if I would have been playing it better... Only at that part, I would have I would have tried to take the ads first. But it didn't matter. We took the wizard out. And the shotgun allows us to push on the last two enemies. So, we've got one more wizard to take out. Which, as you can see, we've got Petitioner's Mark times three. You get 45 seconds per mark. To kill, to, once you collect a mark, you've got 45 seconds to kill the next wizard to get their mark. Once you've collected four, you will get Petitioner's Burden, which gives you 45 seconds to collect the rest of Petitioner, to, to slam Petitioner's Burden. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slam from the other side. So I'm going to slam from the same side we're defending on, because it's easier to get back to my defensive spot. So we go over, slam, we've got the Thunderlord out. Make sure you drop down, don't stay up top, because the, another wave of ads has spawned. And the snipers, as you can see, were hitting me. Take out the Axian darts. Pop your super. Don't pop your super 
while there's before the axiom while the axiom darts are still up because your golden gun more than likely will hit one of those so you're going to just to recap once you get petitioner's bur burden you're going to go to that side i was on which is this side the, the left hand side right hand side depending on what way you look at the same side we're on now take out the axiom darts that when he fires them at you so you'll probably put you know quite a bit of thunder lord into him as well once the axiom darts are gone pop your super you want to unleash two full clips of Thunderlord. And then as soon as they're done, he'll still be active. Just come back into cover. Just make your way back here. You'll be safe. And rinse and repeat. It's very, very simple. It's very simple within the mechanics of this. I'm not saying this is a very simple encounter. But for anybody that's got that's tried this, this is a very simple way to do it. Wizard shooting at us, pop our shield, she'll go and hide. There's the last ad. We want to put a little bit on this wizard before she goes and hides. And now we come back, break our wizard shield again. Now we can focus on the ads over the other side. See, breaking that wizard shield, she will just run away. She will just run away. She tried to fire at me there. You could see the actual animation of her firing. Because I fired at the other wizard, she's now active so it's up to you you don't have to fire at all the wizards i like to get their shields down it makes them easier to kill and we're just making sure we take anytime i get hit by a wizard i'll just break their shield and that makes them run away and we just want to make sure we take down those snipers over the other side because we're on our own and it's a flawless run we're not wanting to take we don't want to take any any uh any risks so we don't want the less enemies that are there when you attack this wizard the easier your life will be you basically got one side where you're gonna have ads and that's the back the very far end so we took that we took that wizard out we've seen heavy we're gonna collect the heavy slide get back into cover and when we're in cover on this wall now we'll attack the next wizard just making sure I'm reloaded. Always make sure you're reloaded. And there's the wizard down. So it did pay to put that damage on the wizard because she went down really easily. And now make sure you're using these sigil walls as cover. This I suggest going round towards the stairs a bit more. Round onto those stairs, I would say. And yep, right against these stairs. And as you can see, this time we're going to take going to take all the ads first again we couldn't break our shield because of the, the ads we'll break our shield now it affords us a couple of seconds to take the ads she'll run away it's fine shotguns reloaded jump over the wall she's gone and we're, we're back easy easy as you like again we're going to take this wizard down break the shield Put as much on her as I can. As you can see that doing good damage. She'll hide properly now. We'll go and run over. We just want to make sure we break her shield. Make sure your shotgun is, is reloaded. We'll push behind the wall. She she turns out at the same time. Got a shot on her. Push, back, push up to the sigil wall. Now we've got petitioner's burden. So now we're going to slam from here. Because this ogre does not stand a chance. But because he's so close... This kind of black onyx wall, this black rock wall, you can use that as cover. Make sure he's between you and the wall. You can get up here. He'll still be shooting at you. Sometimes he'll fire his axioms really quick. Make sure you take those axiom darts out before you do anything else. Pop your super. That's all she wrote. Really simple way to do the ogre. So you're going to use these sigil walls as your cover for, for when you're traversing this area. Once you get petition, collected four petitioner's marks, you will get petitioner's burden, which what you're going to do now is you're going to uh, slam the first sigil. It will be the furthest sigil on the same side you norm where you start. Your, your, your defendable position, you'll slam the sigil on that side so that you can get back into cover quicker. Put 
take all the axiom darts off him to start with, put a bit on him and then pop your super, put a super into him, put the rest of your Thunderlord into him, dodge reload, by this time you'll fire his second set of axiom darts, take them out, put the rest of your Thunderlord on him and then make it back into cover. Rinse and repeat and you're good. That is a very simple way, it is, there's no acrobatics, there's no skill, it, no, well, there is a bit of skill, but there's no, only some people will be able to do this. Practice makes perfect. I'm sure all of you guys will get that. That's the ogre. I'll leave you to watch the rest of the gameplay, and I will get to you guys again just before the lack of room. Thank <laughs> you. 
So guys, as, as you can see, <clears throat> I'm going to take a shortcut here. We're on our way to Dalakaroo. I'm going to take this shortcut because I've got Stompies on and I've got the Midnight Coup, which is a lightweight frame. I switched weapons. I switched to, to a scout rifle to start with to generate heavy ammo. And then once I generated some heavy ammo, I switched back to the shotgun. It's the shotgun that's that's really important for the strategy. Not because it's the EP shotgun. I do not proc trench barrel. So Hawthorne's shotgun uh, would work. Threat level, perfect paradox, they would all work. It's just having an automatic shotgun. You won't drop special ammo unless you've got a weapon on that, ex that needs special ammo. So we've got Orpheus rig, we've got the tether. Basically what we're going to do is when we get up top here, I'm going to put back, uh, put my uh, pulse, pulse rifle back on. We're going to tether the knights from where we are, right as soon as we land, this area here. So we've got enough shotgun ammo, you need at least two clips of shotgun ammo, I would say, maybe more. So we're going to activate the, the knights, let them come up towards us and tether the top of the stairs. As soon as they're caught, the two of them, the two back ones, are going to want to go. I've tested this on heavy. It doesn't work with heavy. That's why you, you need to use a shotgun with heavy. They all just want to disappear out, out of the tether straight away. Every time you do damage when you tether, you will get your, your tether back. So, and as you might have noticed, all the scions are gone. Because they push your position. And as soon as they push your position, as soon as your position is pushed... Uh, they'll get grabbed by the tether. And as you can see, by doing damage to the knights while they're tethered, it shares the damage. You kill all three of them here with all the adds. And then all that's left to do, proc whisper breathing. It takes about eight shots with the setup we've got with having the 25% additional damage because of the transcendent blessing and the, the one ribbons curse. And there you go, guys. That is a solo flawless. That That is a repeatable strategy that will work all the time. I've tested it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps some of you guys. Any questions you've got, leave them in the comments. If you think this can help people, don't, don't, be, don't hesitate to share. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.